In this video, I'm going to give my argument for why I believe every entrepreneur should stop drinking alcohol. Now, this is a little bit different from some of my other videos. I'm not going to do any cuts or any edits, but I felt that this was pretty appropriate because uh, I'm in Las Vegas right now speaking at a few different uh, events and on a few podcasts. And it's never more stark to me the different uh, decisions that I make in my life compared to what the general population does than when I go to places like Las Vegas uh, and I'm going down to work out at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, and I see you know everybody drinking and wasted, playing gambling, et cetera, et cetera. And this is not a judgmental video on anybody or anybody's decisions. This is more a video because when I see people like that or I see them in the gym or um, I'm in the sauna with people and, and people ask, ask me some questions, or even my clients, they always go, you know, like, uh, you know, how, how do you wake up in the same time every day? How do you go to bed at the same time every day? And I always tell them, you know, it's my habits, blah, 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 the stuff you guys all know. And I go in and another big part of it is like, we don't party, uh, we don't drink alcohol. And everyone's like, ah, oh, I wish I could do that. You know, and it's just always so funny to me because I'm like, I, it's, you can do that. I, and then there's the, you know, plenty of excuses, right? Oh, my business doesn't allow it. I wouldn't be able to social or network. And so this video is kind of going to be, um, I have some notes here I want to walk through, but this video is kind of going to be sh showing you all the reasons why a lot of that is baloney. And I'm just going through my own personal experience and relationship with alcohol. I cannot stress this enough. I'm not saying that I know the right way to do everything. I am not saying that, um, that like, uh, if, uh, because I stopped drinking alcohol, you should stop drinking alcohol. I'm just giving you a video that I wish that I had watched maybe when I was a little bit younger earlier on in my journey. Um, so, um, just a few co context. If you're new to this channel, uh, who am I? Right. So my name is Robbie Bala. I run a company called scaling with systems. Um, by 29 years old, I've done tens of millions of dollars online. Uh, just five years ago, I was waiting tables at an Italian restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. And just a few years before that, I went to college at Florida state. And it was here that I really started uh, having an abusive relationship with alcohol. Um, you know, abusive is an interesting word because when you're surrounded by all these other people that are doing it, it doesn't seem like you're abusing it. But I lived in, a, in my fraternity house and I would drink. It wasn't uncommon to drink five to seven nights a week. And then for the first time, I'll admit something to the general public, which was I was also pretty addicted to Xanax at the time as well. Uh, and it was because I could kind of drink a little bit less and take some Xanax and it would make my uh, like experience, uh, just as like crazy as everybody else is, but I didn't have that bad of a hangover the next day. And it started with just like a little bit of Xanax and just slowly developed over time. And I wasn't like taking 10 pills a day, but, um, it wasn't until after I graduated college and I got, kind of removed myself from that environment that I realized how much I was doing all of this stuff. And it's just ironic because when I was in college and everybody else was doing it, I was also in incredible shape. I had less than 8% body fat. I was also, um, you know, I was in pre-law. I was in case competition. I had straight A's like, you know, so on the outside, everything looked like it was perfect. And so it just, I, I didn't make this correlation between me drinking alcohol, having any impact on my life. If anything, it helped my life, right? It got me girls. It made me more social, all these things there. So you know, it was, it's this interesting relationship where it was almost like I had believed that there was absolutely nothing wrong with alcohol and me doing it. It was also uh, further solidified by everybody else around me drinking alcohol. Um, and it was also further solidified with that everything in my life was quote unquote growing great. Right. Um, and if we take even one step further before that, um, I've always had an even more unique relationship with alcohol than may, maybe many others because without going into too much detail, my uh, very close family members um, have struggled with alcoholism. So I have been around alcohol, alcoholism literally my entire life, uh, and I have seen absolute devastating effects of it. Um, and like I'm talking about hospitalizations, ruined relationships, a lot of stuff. I won't go into the details to respect other people's privacy, but... Um, I've had a really, really, really poor experience in my personal life with alcohol from close family members. So you would think that that would prevent me from drinking or that would like notify me that maybe I shouldn't be drinking or partying or whatever else it is. But, um, ironically enough, it didn't. Uh, and, and so 
I went to college. I had this relationship with alcohol and then I graduated college. And for those that have been following me for a while, you know that I moved in with my dad and he had diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And so I was taking him to chemo and radiation five days a week. And, and, uh, I was living at his house and it was here that I had to go cold Turkey. I no longer had, uh, the access to the drugs that I had in college. And I also uh, was like, had to change my life to take care of my dad. And, and so I was studying for law school. I wanted to go to the gym, et cetera, et cetera. And so I just went cold Turkey. Uh, and this was literally uh, like a few weeks after I graduated college. So couldn't have been a more 180 degree turnaround because I went from friends every single day, partying, social girls, drinks, drugs, fraternity life, et cetera, et cetera, to within just a few weeks, isolated in my dad's house, studying for law school, no drinking, no friends, no girls, no drugs, um, and, and just spending time with him and, and trying to take care of him. And I bring up that story because uh, I think that I, I always tell people in my entrepreneurial life, my dad getting cancer was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it caused me to pump the brakes on the life that I was going towards, uh, which was I was going to go to be a lawyer. And it made me like stop between college and law school. And actually it forced me to take a second to really self reflect and decide if I wanted to be a lawyer or not. And I ended up not being a lawyer. Uh, but it also, I, the other part that I don't talk about it is it also was hugely impactful in my personal life because uh, once again, I think the alcohol had played into just like, literally I, I wasn't, I was never thinking for myself. I didn't even have time to sit in isolation and like reflect on what I wanted out of life. I was just drinking and doing drugs and partying. And like, I was just doing what everybody else told me to do, which was eventually going to go be a lawyer. And so when I went cold Turkey and when I, I moved with my dad, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me because ever since I did that, I really rarely ever drank after that. Um, because what happened was that once I like severed that relationship and that, that connection with alcohol, then I started like really self analyzing about the things in my life that were really helping me and things that were hurting me. And so if you stop drinking alcohol and some people do it for like seven days or, or like dry January or, but like, if you stop for like 90 days or like four months or six months, then if you ever drink again after that, at least for me, the question I would ask myself is like, what the hell am I doing? Like, because I had, I had enough time had passed where I realized that all the stuff that I thought I needed alcohol for, I could easily do without alcohol. And not only that, I had so much more time in my day uh, to be productive and to work and even just to like feel good about myself and my life. And so whenever I would like, okay, let's say I stopped drinking for four or six months. Um, and then I would like, my friend would invite me out. I would go out, I'd stay out to two o'clock in the morning. We'd go to a bar or something like that. The next day I would just feel literally like 5% of my normal self. And you know, it, it's hard when you're in the moment of drinking, even every weekend, once a week, something like that. It's hard in the moment to realize the impact that's having, because that's all, you know, your baseline is that. But then if you were removing yourself from that situation and you go literally into the uh, absolute opposite where there's no alcohol or drugs in your life whatsoever, then you're, you get a new baseline. And so then anything that drags that baseline down, whether it's like being out of shape or it's alcohol or drugs, if you have enough self-reflection, you're like, what, what am I doing? Why, why would I do this? And so, um, that was like my first main transition. This is before I even started a business. I was w w waiting tables in an Italian restaurant while I was taking care of my dad, like before I even started making money online, any of that. But I don't think that it's a coincidence that uh, I decided to take care of myself, my body, my mind, my health, and I've been able to achieve the very little amount of success I've been able to achieve in a few short years. And it's really because I believe I've had the clarity to make great decisions. Um, and I always tell people, this is uh, in my principles that I read about my life, that um, I believe your life is the sum consequences of your decisions. And your decisions are the sum consequences of your clarity and energy. And your clarity and energy are the sum consequences of stuff like sleep, whether you're drinking, et cetera, et cetera. You can make one bad decision, uh, drinking alcohol, that can impact the rest of your life. Another thing I've never shared with anybody, uh, online at least, is that uh, back when I was in uh, drinking a lot, I had a really great girlfriend and uh, I was out in Cabo San Lucas and I was drinking and I cheated on my girlfriend. Um, that's one of the things I'm most embarrassed and most ashamed of in my entire life. I've never done that again and I never will. Um, and, and I, 
I can't believe I, I just shared that with you. I was so embarrassed and ashamed the next day. Uh, I literally had an anxiety attack, the one and only anxiety attack I've ever had in my entire life. And I won't get into how much that, like how I, when I saw how much that hurt the other person, how much I was just like, oh my God, I can, and I'm not going to blame that on the alcohol because I made the decision to drink the alcohol, but there's no doubt that alcohol, it plays with your prefrontal cortex and it lowers your inhibitions. And, and so, but even then I, I still didn't stop drinking after that. You know, even then that, that totally ch- like radically changed this girl I was with for years and like, it just changed. I still hadn't made that connection yet. Um, and it's just funny because it's like all of these different things were playing it like playing my family having a really abusive relationship with alcohol, me cheating on the girl, my girlfriend who I've been with for years, a great relationship uh, and like separating that and ruining a lot of relationships that we had with friends together uh, because uh, because of that, like lowering my status in society because I had done that as well. Like I still hadn't made that. It wasn't until I literally had my dad with stage four lung cancer, I had to go up there and then I just didn't have access to it that I, it like made me kind of clean break it. And um, uh, I'm kind of reading from my notes here as well. Um, the kind of the, the things that people say when I make videos like this, right? Uh, either they say, oh yeah, that, I made, that makes sense, but I only drink a few nights a week or you know, I only drink here and so-and-so. And, and, and radical transparency. Uh, I'm not totally abstained from alcohol. I typically drink about three times a year, three to five times a year. And when I say drink, I'm saying like I have one glass. I really love a nice tequila reposado like uh, on the rocks. And it's not even to get drunk. Literally, it's typically one glass that I'll nurse for like two hours. It's just for the taste of it. And I still feel it the next morning. I still feel one glass of wine or one tequila. I'll still feel it the next morning. So I'm not totally abstained. But it's it's pretty darn close, right? Um, you know, and so... Most people say, oh, like I only drink once a week or once every two weeks or blah, blah, blah. Like, and, and it just goes back to that baseline thing. It's like once you establish what your new you is, like this could go, this could play into uh, even wealth, like building wealth and how much money you've made. Once you establish a new quality of life, you never want to go back. Your health, once you get like energy and vitality and you feel good, you look good, people compliment you, you never want to go back. And then with alcohol and drugs, it's like once you have a clear mind every single day, 365 days a year, like you wake up on time, you go to bed on time, you feel like you're Superman, you can see through walls, you can run through walls. You would like never want to do anything to bring that back down again. And I'm not a scientist about alcohol and all that stuff. So I'm not trying to argument alcoholism, nature versus nurture. I'm just giving you guys my own experience. In a second, I'm going to kind of cover a few things that I've done that have really helped me. But um, first, I want to touch on a point that people always bring up, which is like that they only drink um, a few times a week or once once a week or maybe once every two weeks or, you know, only when there's something fun going on. Um, and it kind of it kind of goes back to the point that I made earlier about your baseline and the point about you're, you're still just literally one decision away from potentially ruining your entire life. And I've seen that happen to a lot of people that I love. Um, and so understand that, uh, the, the, the more you can keep yourself out of those situations, uh, the higher chance that you'll have of not making one of those decisions that could ruin the rest of your life. Um, and the second thing that people say around like alcohol, uh, in abstaining is that, oh, they need alcohol to socialize uh, or they need it for their business. That's my favorite thing. I need it for my business, right? And this literally happened like two days ago when I was at my uh, sauna at my gym. And this guy was saying like, I don't know, somehow we got in the conversation of alcohol. Almost always it's like people ask me what time I wake up or go to bed or something like that. And then uh, like, oh, well, I, well, even on the weekends? And I'm like, yeah, even on the weekends. And And then they're like, well, uh, and I say, oh, I, you know, one of the big points is I just don't drink alcohol and that helps me stay consistent. And they go, oh, I, I wish I could do that. I, I never could, but my business requires me to drink alcohol. And it's like, when this guy said this, I was like, my man, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's absolutely no businesses out there that require you, maybe an alcohol taster, I don't know, but like, there's no businesses that require you to drink alcohol. This is a narrative that you've told yourself. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, but you probably don't, uh, you, you probably don't have the, like, you don't understand. Like, you know, I run a business, you know, and I'm like, okay, I run a business. He's like, oh, I got to wine and dine my clients. I'm like, I host multiple events a year with hundreds of clients. Um, and like, I, I bring them all. We have open bars at our events. Like they can drink alcohol if they want to. I just abstain from it. Um, and, uh, it's, it's also, I'm reading the notes that I have right here as well. Um, and he said, Let's see here. Uh, 
yeah <laughs> he's he's like he's like yeah you ha- i have to do this because my job requires it i'm in this industry that requires it and i'm like dude that's the thing that you're missing is that you don't have to do anything don't work in that industry like if your job requires it then don't do it. and this is just for the people that want to quit but they can't because they're telling them a narrative i'm just telling you that you can do whatever the hell you want to do you can make the decision not to drink alcohol, and if that your job requires you to drink alcohol for whatever reason, then if you really wanted to quit, then you would quit that job. It's literally as simple as that. Or in my own experience, like I go out um, and I go to like uh, bars and I'll go to maybe a club every once in a while because uh, I just don't like to stay up late. And when I go, I, most of the time I don't drink anything. I'll just sit there, I'll have a, a, a Pellegrino. And um, I used to like fake that I had a drink in my hand. So I put a Pellegrino and I put a lime inside of it. And if you felt like that makes you more comfortable, then you can do that. But eventually I'm like, what am I embarrassed about? If anything, I should be proud of myself for doing this. And so now what I do is I just drink Pellegrino. And then I, you know, they almost always give it in a different glass. uh, And I'm at this like bar, this club or whatever. And they're like, oh, you're not drinking. And I'm like, oh no, I really don't drink. And then once again, the cycle repeats itself. Oh, I wish I could do that, you know? And so that, you know, I'm making this video so that I don't have to have this conversation 50 times in a week. I can just send people the link to this. Um, And the other thing that I uh, have kind of noticed, I will say this, is that, um, I, I see a, a really great trend going on in at least the United States. And that is that I, I feel like more and more people are talking about alcohol, the impacts on your life, and more and more people are abstaining from it. And more and more people are seeing major benefits of it, from it. And um, I'll, just to kind of drive that point home, I'll tell you a funny story. I came to Las Vegas a few years ago, like three, four years ago. And when I came here, I was speaking at these events. And once again, it was the exact same scenario. I was uh, not drinking. And there was like a huge stark contrast between my what I was doing and what other people were doing. And I was running um, along the strip here in the morning at like 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. And I'll never forget, like, I remember running past this one lady while she was literally throwing up on the sidewalk uh, from, I'm assuming, her going out and drinking the night before. And I was just like, I, just, I was like, wow, this is super gross. And I, and it's, it's like this huge, and then I would go to the gym after I would done the run and there would be nobody in the gym, nobody in the gym. Literally, I was the only person there. And now I'm here and um, there, I went to the gym this morning and there's like, the gym's packed. Maybe not packed, but it's pretty busy. Uh, it's way a huge contrast of what it used to be. So I kind of want to be like part of, uh, of this movement a little bit, even though it's totally outside of my industry and totally outside of my business and who I serve and what I do for clients. I kind of want to be a part of this because I believe in the message and it's like totally and radically um, changed my life for sure. Um, and you know, I will say that uh, the, the, the final two pieces I will talk about when it comes to abstaining and maybe something that can help you is going to be around relationships and like girls or the, the opposite sex and, um, and your environment. Uh, when I tell people I live in Miami, they go, oh, I wish I could live in Miami, but uh, I, I never could. I'd party all the time, right? And it goes back to like our everything, life is what you make it, right? Um, like I said, I've been in Miami for four years. I've gone out maybe two or three times. Um, and, but I will say that environmental factors do play a role. Uh, environmental factors do play a role in your ability to abstain. Remember, I was in college and in college, everybody else was drinking. And so it was almost more of the norm to drink than not drink. And so you were like an outcast, an outsider. If you didn't drink, you couldn't socialize. I wouldn't say you couldn't, but it was more difficult to socialize, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I wouldn't downplay your environment in impacting your decision, like ability to make this decision. Um, and so, but don't use that as a crutch. I live in one of the biggest party cities in the world, Miami, Florida, and I don't even like consider drinking alcohol ever. And I don't really see other people drinking alcohol that often. I just built a life around that instead. And, and also even when I go back home or even when I see some of those family members that still struggle with alcohol, uh, like uh, drinking heavily. Um, I, I still don't drink around them. Um, and now like they know it's like, they don't even offer me when I go places. Um, like even my hometown bars would just offer me a water when I go out to see the people there. And this was like only five years from where before I'd be doing like shots of tequila on the bar, um, to start the, to start the night. Uh, 
but so, so don't use it. Don't use your environment as an excuse. Uh, but understand it definitely plays an impact. If you're in an environment that you can't get out of uh, because whatever reason, financial, something else like that, then build a stronger willpower and change your habits until you get to the point that you can break out of that environment. Um, and the last point I kind of want to touch on is around um, relationships, uh, because most people don't even consider this. But if you have been trying to abstain from alcohol, trying to drop drinking alcohol, or really any decision, and your significant other doesn't want to do that, or isn't doing that, or doesn't see the benefit of it, it's going to be pretty darn hard for you to, to do it. It will be. Because this person is likely who you're spending every second of every single day with. And it's very easy to slip right back. It's a lot easier to do the thing that everybody else is doing that makes you feel good than the thing that nobody is doing that is actually probably painful in the short term. And I'm super fortunate. And I actually asked my girlfriend if I could kind of um, tell her this story, tell this story to you guys, because I really wanted to drive this point home. But I'm fortunate to be with my girlfriend, who's incredible, who uh, I drink, like, like I said, three to four times a year. She drinks literally never. Uh, she hasn't had a drink in three years, not one drop of alcohol. And what happened was we were in Cabo San Lucas, which is funny. I feel like all my stories around alcohol starts with I was in Cabo San Lucas. And she, we went out, it was New Year's Eve, and I was having just a few drinks. And she decided, like, we we're with a bunch of people, and uh, there was all this social pressure to, like, shot, shot, shots. And she really didn't drink before that. Uh, and I remember telling her, like, baby, you know, I would maybe slow down a little bit. Um, you know, you never drink. You really barely drink. But she was drinking and, and having a good time. And just to be respectful to her, I won't go into the, all the details of the night. But let's just say that it wasn't her best night. It wasn't her favorite night of her life. And in the morning, um, you know, woke up and I was totally fine. I, I think I would, like, had come back from a run or something. And she's like, I never want to drink again. I didn't like who I was when I was drinking that. And um, I, I never want to drink again. And then she said something that I'll never forget. And one of the reasons why I really love her is she said, but I'm not going to be the person that says all the time, I never want to drink again. And then literally the next week, and I'm drinking again, I, I really think I might just never drink again. And that was three years ago. And she hasn't had a drop of alcohol since that day. And so that's been so helpful for me. Because now our date nights, it's like just not even a question. It's not even like there's – and then the activities that we do, like that my executive assistant plans out for us, they're not – they don't include alcohol. It's like it's not – there's – you don't – I don't even have to make that decision in my mind anywhere we go or do anything. It's not even a thought. We just drink Pellegrino. That's like it's just – and it's so much easier that way. Um, you know, if anything, maybe she could make a video about the challenges of sometimes me drinking and her not drinking. But she doesn't mention anything to me about it But because uh, it's so rare. But that's been super helpful for me is having somebody around me that does that also doesn't do it. And so it's just not even a thought in our, our minds. Uh, and I'm really grateful for that. And, you know, once again, I'm not saying that I will never, ever drink alcohol. I'm saying that it's very, very rare. And I'm not saying that she will never drink alcohol. Um, you know, we're going to France for a few weeks and a little bit here. I'm hosting an event there. And we're talking about staying at a vineyard, uh, on a vineyard, and like maybe go, staying at a vineyard and having some local wine there, like a glass or two of local wine. Uh, you know, it's just so funny because it's like we're having this. Should we have this glass of wine? You know, it's, people wouldn't even think about it. But like, if we stay here, do you think we're like we're two weeks away? We're like, should we do this? It's 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 funny how our our brains kind of think differently. Um, and I'm just incredibly grateful because that that, that has helped me so much in abstaining. Um, and. Uh, we kind of habit stack a few of those things together. So um, I don't, I, I really don't eat refined sugar. I don't do drugs. I don't drink alcohol. And like, cause all of those things going back to that baseline thing, all of those things in the next morning, whenever I did that, I would realize that that made me feel terrible. And so uh, I just was like, okay, alcohol done, a new baseline drugs. Don't like that done new baseline refined sugar. Don't like that new baseline, uh, eight plus hours of sleep, a minimum. Uh, I feel amazing new baseline, right? So it's like every single time I'm like raising my standards, uh, but it, it started with alcohol. It started with alcohol, which ironically I think is the most difficult thing to do. Um, cool. I kind of want to end on, um, on this final point here, which is that, um, I think that I think it's safe to say that alcohol has uh, stop drinking alcohol has 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 been probably the single most important thing I've done in my personal life, and I don't say that lightly. But it has probably been the single most important thing I've done in my personal life, uh, mainly because when I was drinking um, in college in high school, 
I was, I think, so afraid of what would happen if the music stopped. What would happen if I stopped drinking? I stopped doing drugs, and I had to have. I stopped hanging out with friends. Right? I was. I was left in a. I was in a fraternity house with seventy guys. So, for three years, there wasn't like one moment I was by myself, or may, and then also maybe not doing drugs or alcohol. Like almost never. And you know, I had kind of thought like, what happens if I were to be left alone with my own thoughts? Who would I be? Who would I? What kind of conversation would I have with myself? Um, and like I said, my dad getting cancer was one of the best things that, and he's in remission, but it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I don't think I ever would have stopped to self-reflect and have that brutal conversation with myself if, um, if I didn't have to go cold Turkey when I went to go take care of him. Um, and it was through that, that I learned, I was able to just like take a break and be like, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't be a lawyer. I mean, my whole friends and family and everybody wants me to be a lawyer. I've told everybody my whole life I was going to be a lawyer and uh, I'm studying for law school right now. Uh, and, and I've never really even thought about that there was other paths out there only because I was with friends all the time, drinking all the time, doing drugs all the time. So I didn't even have a chance to think about who is Ravi Bavala just when you take everything else away. And... I think that I, I would have gone and, – and lawyers have the highest rate of alcoholism than any other profession out there. And if you combine that with what my close family members have experienced with their difficulties with alcohol, I think I could have been living a very, very different life if I didn't make that decision or really if that decision wasn't made for me. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. I really just wanted to kind of – I kind of wanted to do this video just because – I've never talked about a lot of this stuff before, and uh, it's totally different than any of my other videos. And I want to just be able to give this video whenever I meet somebody and they're just like, I wish I could do that. I just want to be like, just watch this video. And then you make the decision for yourself about what you can or can't do. But I would say that abstaining from alcohol has been the single most important decision I've ever made in my personal life. And I would very much accredit it to the small amount of success I've seen in my life is, is definitely part of that. And if you're dealing with it right now, um, just first of all, know that you're not alone. Second of all, know that there is a better life. Um, and I promise you that if you were to s stop and be isolated and get to know the real you, you'd probably realize that you don't even really like it. The only reason you probably like it is because um, it fits in the mold of what your current life looks like. And if you're doing, if you're drinking and doing drugs and whatever, and you're, lo you absolutely love your life the way that it is right now, then you can just turn off this video and you don't have to listen to me. But I would challenge you, I would challenge you that your baseline is probably not what as high as it could be. And that's always what I tell people. Whenever people say, uh, you know, like, oh, I, I just, uh, I smoke weed to go to sleep. Um, I needed to go to sleep and, oh, it doesn't affect me. I just needed to go to sleep. You know, and I actually stopped saying it because I would get in arguments with people. But I used to say, yeah, it's probably because you're operating at about 50% capacity. So you're just used to 50% capacity. Now I'm like, I don't know if you know that, uh, that story of like the princess who sleeps on like 26 mattresses and they put a pee in, in between one of the mattresses and like she has a terrible night of sleep. I'm kind of like that person now um, in the sense that like if I have a, a cookie – if I eat too late to bed, if I drink alcohol, do drugs, whatever, I can feel it the next day. And some people are going to be like, what a terrible life that would live. And once again, it's just like those things, I, I, it's because I've identified what brings me happiness. I know what gives me joy. And, um, and those are not part of it. Uh, those things actually subtract from it, right? I love working on businesses, spending quality time with friends. I love making money. I'm going to be honest with you. I love making money. And a lot of those things all detract from it. And so if you're telling yourself that you need it, then, um, then, or that, that you, 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 it's okay, it doesn't really impact you, then I would challenge you to not do it for six months. Figure out what your actual real baseline of who you really are is, and then try to go back to it again and see what happens. So anyway, 
totally different video than I've ever done. If you guys enjoy it, please let me know down in the comments below. I have a different video on why I stopped smoking weed. Um, and that actually is probably one of my more popular videos that I did, but I've, I never talked about the main thing that I did, which was this it was the first decision that I made, uh, or in some ways was made for me. Um, so let me know in the comments down below. Also, uh, maybe share this with somebody who needs to see it. Uh, if, if you think that would be helpful. And, um, if you are looking for something to kind of like, if you do want to work on a better version of you. Uh, if you want, we just released a new product called Scaling School. Um, and it's $97 a month, but it covers literally every single thing that I've learned going from zero to multiple eight figures online with no previous business experience. And, uh, and that could be a way that you either start or scale a business inside of there. Once again, I'm not, this is not a hard pitch. You don't have to buy it, but uh, this video, I'm trying to just like encompass everything. It's like, stop doing the things that hurt you and then invest in some things that can maybe make you a better, uh, enjoy your life more or can give you even a, a fuller life. So that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.